letting your children hear your voice. Here's why it's important, because when they go to school, their peers are talking in the, school, in the lunch line. They're talking on the school bus. They're talking at lunchtime. They're talking at rest, recess, installing their value system into your children. But if your children can hear your voice, they won't adopt the value system that's not congruent with you and your family's value system. I could always hear my daddy's voice. My daddy was a 6'6", 240-pound high school principal who said what he meant and meant what he said. I was not raised by a single mom. I didn't play my way out the ghetto. I was going to college anyway. If I needed some money, I would say, yo, pops, I need some money. My daddy drove Lincoln Continentals as long as this stage. So please be careful what you allow the media to teach you. If you rely on the media as your only source of information, you will buy into every stereotype known to man. Here's where my life got tricky. I remember the first day of high school. My mother dressed me up in a nice outfit and I walked in the first day of school just like this. The one thing I learned about playing the NBA, hear me and hear me good, if you got a notepad, write this down. Confidence is arrogance under control. That's all confidence is. The only thing I miss about the NBA is being around 15 people all day long who are thoroughly convinced they're the best in the world at what they do. That's the only thing I miss about the NBA. I don't miss the money because I make more. I don't miss the travel because I travel more. The only thing I miss about the NBA is being around 15 people all day long who are thoroughly convinced they're the best in the world at what they do. When I left sports and got into the real world, I began to realize that people struggle with confidence. I hate to pick on ladies, but ladies, you are so hard on each other. You say women, you hear women say this all the time. Mm, I cannot stand that woman right there. Oh, she gets on my nerves. I mean, she thinks she's all that. Ladies, you know I'm telling the truth. In fact, help me finish this statement. Who does she? she is. Who does she think she is? Well, let me help you out. Michael Jordan knew who he was. LeBron James knows who he is. See, the only way someone's confidence can offend or annoy you is if you struggle with your own confidence. <laughs> confident people don't bother me. Confident people don't offend me. I love confident people, but this is what you should be careful of. Don't you ever cross that line into arrogance. Because arrogant people stop growing, arrogant people stop developing, because arrogant people think they have arrived. Be as confident as you can be without crossing the line into arrogance. So I walked into high school, the first day of school, full of confidence until I passed the principal's office, and he was 6'6", 240 pounds. <laughs> Everybody else called him Mr. Bond, but I called him Dad. That was the longest day of my life. I went to the lunchroom and ate, and ate lunch all by myself. I could hear my classmates whisper, that's the principal, son. That's the principal, son. Where? Right there. I couldn't wait to get home. I made up my mind, when I get home, I'm going to throw a pity party. You guys don't know me that well, but when I party, I know how to party. I'm the only motivational speaker that you will ever meet that will advocate a pity party. I came home that first day of school, closed my bedroom door, and I brought out my boombox. I'm 43, the technology of my time was a boom box. If you had a boom box in high school, you were cool. Now I know we have some older people here and you look confused. Raise your hands if you played records in high school. 33s, 45s, 78s. Raise both hands if you had an eight track tape player in high school. Some of you guys used to crank your music, didn't you? I got home that first day of school, closed my bedroom door, and I brought my boombox out, and I invited Lionel Richie to my pity party. 
The words had nothing to do with my situation, but it didn't matter. I just wanted to throw a pity party. Elena Ritchie was always there to help me. <laughs> Hello? <laughs> Is it me you're looking for? For I wonder where you are, and I wonder what you do. Does anybody know what I did after the song was over? I played it again. <laughs> I played that song over and over and over again, over and over and over again, over and over and over again. And that's what a pity party is, is when you have an undisciplined mind and you meditate on the wrong thing over and over and over again, over and over and over again. There you are, Mr. and Mrs. Advocare. You go on a sales call, and all of a sudden this couple who you knew were perfect for the business, they turned you down, and you went home and threw a pity party. <laughs> I don't like the feeling of rejection. I don't like the feeling of being rejected. <laughs> Why did my husband drag me into this business? <laughs> Here's what I know about life. I give you three days to throw a pity party and that's it. If you're going to throw a pity party, I give you three days and that's it. And after three days, you cut off your boombox, your 8-track tape, your record player, your iPod, your MP3, and you come up with a plan. I threw me a good old pity party, and after three days, I cut off my boombox, and I came up with a plan. I'm going back to high school. I'll be starting a baseball team, basketball team, football team, president of the journalism club, and my classmates will vote me most likely to succeed. See, some of you guys came here throwing pity parties. I'm here to tell you, you need to stop your pity party because in 365 days, it's going to be you and your wife on the stage telling us your testimony. <laughs> By the time I graduated from high school, I was star of the baseball team, basketball team, football team, president of the journalism club, and my classmates voted me most likely to succeed, and I heard through the grapevine all the girls thought I was cute. 